What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video. I cannot even explain it to you guys. I am such a nerd. I was thinking about this like I, me being so excited to talk about sinking funds is just hilarious. So anyway, hi, I'm Lo if you're new here and I make videos about my family's personal finance journey to get out of debt and save for retirement and all that good stuff. So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the best budgeting tip that I have ever learned, the biggest game changer for us in terms of budgeting, and that is sinking funds. So what the heck is a sinking fund? A sinking fund is a fund where you put money aside every month for a future expense. It can be something that is gonna be, you know, a kind of unexpected expense or a variable expense or even an infrequent expense. And by setting aside money every month, you avoid a situation where you have a big cost in a certain category all in one month that you haven't really totally planned for and it totally blows up your budget. Using sinking funds helps you really know what your cash flow situation is like. When your income comes in and you pay all your expenses, like how much really is left over? Because just paying the minimum for all your bills isn't enough because there's other expenses in life that are going to come up like needing new tires that don't come up every single month, but you do need to budget for because it will eventually come up. So the way I like to think about it, there are three categories for types of sinking funds. The first category is money for a definite expense that is due on a certain date. So a really good example of this is Christmas. Christmas comes every year the same time of year, and generally you can figure out how much you want to spend on Christmas. And you know, if you don't know generally how much you spend on Christmas, that's okay. This is all a learning process, but starting to figure these things out, like even from no information is part of the process. So estimating what you think you're gonna need is fine. I started, you know, tracking all of our finances really, really carefully about a year and a half ago. And so I know exactly how much we spent on Christmas last year and it was about $1,200. So for this year, for 2021, I budgeted $1,200 for Christmas. And that means that every single month, we set aside $100 into our Christmas sinking fund. And that way, by the time December rolls around, we have $1,200 set aside for Christmas expenses and we don't need to put anything on a credit card. It's not gonna blow up our budget. It doesn't cause us stress because every single month we've been putting that $100 aside for Christmas and so we know by the time Christmas is here, it's going to be all set. Another good example of this category of sinking fund is like if you pay car insurance every six months or have a bill that is every six months. You know it's going to be $400 every six months but you don't necessarily just have the $400 sitting there if you don't put money aside in a sinking fund. So if you do have a $400 expense every six months, you take 400 and you divide it by six and you need to put $66 or $67 aside every single month to be able to afford that $400 expense every six months. The second category of sinking funds that we use are for expenses that are guaranteed to come up. You just don't know how much and when uh, they are going to be. So car repairs is a great one for this example. Car repairs are going to happen. If you have a car, you need to set aside money for repairs and maintenance. You need to get regular oil changes, you need to get new brake pads here and there, you maybe pop a tire or you need to replace a tire. Like things happen with cars besides just routine maintenance and even routine maintenance is kind of flexible. It's like, you know, how much did I drive this month? Do I need an oil change now or is it gonna be in two months from now? It really just varies depending on what your life looks like at different points. So we have a car maintenance and repair sinking fund and we don't drive a lot and our cars are relatively new so we just put $50 a month into that sinking fund, but depending on what your expenses are, that may be enough, that may be too much, that may be not enough, it just, it depends. So it takes some tracking to figure out like where is the right amount, but for us, we set aside $50 a month for car repairs, and that way, you know, I took my car for an oil change and we had $500 sitting in that sinking fund, and we just paid it from there, and it feels good. It feels good to use the money in the sinking fund because it's already earmarked for that expense, and you don't have to worry where the money's coming from. The other reason why I like a car repair sinking fund is like some years you have very little car expense expenses and other years you have a ton. Like one year you may just do oil changes and then the next year you pop a tire and you need new brake pads. So you may end up spending, you know, less than you are setting aside in one year, but you're rolling these funds over every single month.
month. These are not like a use it or lose it type thing. You're putting $50 in this sinking fund every single month, whether you use it or not, and it just adds up and adds up and adds up until you end up needing to use it and then you spend the money in that fund and if it gets to a level where you're like mm, i don't think we really need to set aside any more money like you've got a thousand dollars in a car sinking fund maybe if you're not you know planning to buy a new car anytime soon you leave it at that until you end up spending it down a little bit and then you start contributing to it again but Putting the money aside, it's just such a total game changer because when you have these repairs come up, it doesn't impact your budget. You've already planned for them ahead of time. And then the third category of sinking funds that we use is monthly expenses that fluctuate. So you don't have to use a sinking fund for these, but for me and my brain, like it's just so much easier to have our expenses be the same every single month as much as possible than to have these big variations. So a good example of this type of sinking fund is you utilities. We live in New England and so we have very hot summers and very cold winters and a moderate spring and fall. So as you can imagine in the summer our electric bill for our air conditioning is really high and in the winter our gas bill for our heating is also very high and then in the fall and the spring it's much lower. But the thing is I can't go off our spring budget to see okay we paid X number of dollars for utilities in April and then assume that's what we're going to be paying in December. So to me it just made more sense to add up all the months of utilities, go January to December of last year, how much did we pay in total, divide that by 12, and then put that amount into a sinking fund every single month. And so we put, you know, I think it's $300, our utilities are crazy expensive, we put $300 into a sinking fund every single month, and some months our utilities are more than $300, and sometimes it's way less, but over the year, we're putting the same amount towards utilities every single month, so our budget is more predictable. And we know that in those spring and fall months when we're spending you know, less on paying those bills, we're still setting the extra aside and we're not just spending that on like miscellaneous spending because we're gonna need that money in the summer and the winter when those bills are more expensive. Another type of sinking fund we use in this category is for pet expenses. We generally know how much our cat costs us. We know how much his vet visit is once a year, we know how much his food is, but we order it kind of quarterly, you know, as we need it. We order a, bit, a bunch all at once and then we don't order for a while. And we know that he gets the revolution, which is like his flea treatment. And that is, you know, we order a 12 month supply once a year. So we know generally how much he's gonna cost us, but sometimes there's a little bit of extra expenses here and there. So what I did last year is I added up all those things, his food, his medication, his vet visits, and maybe a little bit extra and divided that by 12. And that's how much we put aside in our pet fund every single month. So that way when we order food or he has a vet visit, it's a plan for expense. It's not something that we are trying to come up with at the time that we didn't think of ahead of time and then we already spent the money on something else and then we're putting it on a credit card. So sinking funds have been like totally a game changer for us in stopping using credit cards. We stopped using credit cards in January of 2020 and we didn't start using sinking funds until like the second half of 2020 when I really discovered them and started getting into it. But they just make it so much easier to avoid needing a credit card because we've got that money set aside. You can have as many categories of sinking funds as you want. There's no like right or wrong way to do it. Some people like having a few like big categories and other people have like, you know, 10, specific categories or 15 specific categories and we are more on that end of things like we have a lot of categories for the sinking funds because I like to know specifically like how much are we setting aside for these specific things how much does my daughter need how much are we doing for spending money how much are we doing for pet expenses for utilities for Christmas for all these things and so we right now have a lot of sinking funds we're also trying to pay off like $300,000 of student loan debt so maybe when our student loans have been paid off we won't need to be so careful with our sinking funds because we'll have more extra to play around with but I don't know this is the phase we're in right now and we love having lots of sinking funds with a very specific purposes so we know we're budgeting for all the things that come up we used to have a line item in our budget called unexpected and every single month it would go over budget because we knew there were things that were gonna be unexpected expenses but we just didn't know how much they were gonna be that 
unexpected budget used to be two or three hundred dollars a month and we used to go over almost every single month now it's down to fifty dollars and sometimes we don't even use all that because we have our sinking funds and so the things that come up throughout the year that aren't just the regular monthly predictable expenses have been budgeted for now when I was giving my examples of all the sinking funds I talked about putting the same amount in the sinking fund every single month and you can do it that way but you don't have to that's how I like to do it because I like my budget to be more consistent every single month but maybe that doesn't make sense for you and like you have a month where you do really well or you work some overtime or you get a bonus and you want to pre-fund your sinking funds so for example let's say you want twelve hundred dollars for Christmas and you get you know, you put $100 in January, you put $100 in February, and then you make an extra $1,000 in March, and you put that $1,000 into your Christmas fund, boom, you're done. In March, you're done saving for Christmas. You know that from March to December, as long as you don't touch that money, that money's gonna be waiting for you when you've got Christmas expenses that come up. So you can like pre-fund your sinking funds if you want to, and that's what we've done here or there, depending on like the circumstances, but generally we try to keep it like even every single month. Now be careful pre-funding your sinking funds if it's something like discretionary spending. Like we have a very, very small sinking fund for home decor and if I pre-fund that in January and I spend it all by March, like I don't get to spend anything else on home decor for the rest of the year. So you have to be careful with pre-funding it for funds like that, but if it's something like utilities or like, I don't know, pet expenses, something you're not gonna like accidentally go shopping too much too soon because you see the money's there, then I don't think there's any problem with pre-funding your sinking funds. So just a couple more things I wanna talk about. One is that if you don't have extra money in your budget right now to fund sinking funds, you're like, okay, well, this is a great concept, but like, where's this money supposed to come from? I don't have extra money. Like, that's okay. That's where we were at. And it took time to lower our expenses and increase our income. So we had enough money to have the luxury of funding sinking funds. Like sinking funds to me feel like a luxury because you're setting money aside that you don't have to spend right now. And that really is a luxury to have that extra. And so don't feel bad if you're at the point where you can't quite do that, but just know that like that is the goal that you should be working towards because that is really what your expenses are. Even though you're not paying them on a monthly basis, those are real expenses that you're going to have to pay with your money at some point. And if you don't plan for them at some point, then you're gonna probably end up putting it on a credit card where you're gonna pay 17% interest and be paying, you know, sometimes, you know, a time and a half as much for that expense at the end of the day. The other thing I wanna say is there's different ways to track sinking funds. Some people like doing it through a cash envelope system. I've seen that a lot. And so like, let's say, you know, pet expenses, you put $50 in your pet envelope every single month. And then when you go buy pet food, you take your pet envelope to the pet store with you and you take the cash out of that envelope and buy the pet food. And then you see how much do I have left? Okay, and then you go to the vet and you bring the pet envelope with you and you pay the vet out of that envelope. And that's great, that's a very like um, clear way to track these funds because it's actually cash in an envelope and you're not having to really do a lot of math or tracking, you're just putting cash in an envelope and then putting the envelope away until you need it. The problem with that I found is if you forget to bring the envelope with you, it's confusing. Or if you need to spend more than is in the envelope, like it, you can't go negative in an envelope where if it's in a bank account, like with a bunch of other money, if it goes negative, it just, it could be rectified the following month or something. So um, I think cash envelopes are good if you wanna keep things really simple. And sometimes you may not have enough for the purchase and so you just have to wait and that's okay and so you buy less stuff and maybe you know or you wait an extra month to get something or you know you replace two tires now and two tires later and that's okay but um you know i i found for us like it didn't really work i used to do my spending money in cash like i would take out my weekly spending money in cash and i liked doing my personal spending money that way and so like i knew if i had a haircut i would you know keep my 50 dollars aside for my haircut and then the rest of it i could spend that week or if i wanted to save up for you know some 
piece of clothing or something I could roll my cash over for a couple weeks and use that to buy the thing I wanted but again if you're doing like online shopping of any sort like it's just not as practical to have cash because then you're taking cash out of the bank then you're putting it back in because you want to make an online purchase so it gets a little bit confusing with online shopping and then remembering to bring the right envelope but the thing is like it's better to do the envelope system than do nothing at all if you find other methods too confusing if you don't want to do the cash envelope system there's two other ways that I know of to track sinking funds one is just do a handwritten tracker and I you know maybe I'll come up with one at some point to put on my Etsy shop because um, I know not everybody likes spreadsheets but basically you just need to put the category how much is in the fund to start which if you're just starting out is gonna be zero how much you put into the fund that month and then how much you spent that month and then what the balance at the end of the month is and if you're doing this on a monthly basis like I, I'd recommend you do it at least on a monthly basis, then each month you, you know, update your sinking funds and you do a new sheet and you put new starting balance. You take the, you know, the ending balance from the prior month and you put it at the starting balance for the next month and you just track it that way. And then the third way that you can track it, as you may imagine, which is what we do, big shocker, we use a spreadsheet. So if you watch me regularly, you know I'm like a total spreadsheet nerd. I love my spreadsheets and so we use a spreadsheet and it basically looks like the paper option that I just described, like the handwritten tracker we have our categories and then we have a starting balance we put in there how much we're contributing to each fund that month we enter all our expenses everything we spent out of each fund that month and then it auto calculates the ending balance and then we every month when we do our budget we take those ending balances and we bring them into the starting balance of the next month and that way we know how much we have in each fund in any given month if you have any questions about sinking funds then put it in the comments below i am happy to answer your guys questions this has been the biggest budget game changer for us the best piece of advice i have ever received regarding budgets. There's a lot of good information out there on sinking funds. So if the way I explained it isn't clicking for you, do a search on YouTube on sinking funds. Here are some other people talk about it. I'd highly recommend using them. They have been such a relief for us to know that we have budgeted for these certain expenses. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and want to follow along with my personal finance journey and other personal finance tips, then hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.